Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform an ANOVA test in R. Now when we want to compare the population means of three or more samples, a one-way analysis of variance may be the most appropriate test to use. So in a one-way analysis of variance, our null and alternative hypotheses are fairly straightforward. The null hypothesis is that the population means are equal, and we're going to use samples to determine that. And also our alternative hypothesis is that the, at least two of the population means are not equal. We're going to conduct this test at an alpha value of 0 0.05. Now before we start, let's read in some data. Now this is important to have the data set up in a particular way to use the methods covered in this video. So I have a data file number 89. This is a CSV file uh, of made up data for this video. This file uh, plus all other sample files and R scripts are available in my GitHub. You'll find a link to that in the information section uh, beneath this video on the YouTube page. So I'm going to read this file into a vector called diet data and then I'm going to print the contents of that. So let's run that and take a look at the data. We can see we've got 78 records in our data, but these are broken up into three groups. Uh, in our first column, in the, with three variables in our data set. So the first one is diet, and we've got three diets. So the first group of people are uh, taking diet number one, the second group of people are taking diet number two, and of course the third group of people are taking diet number three. And what we are doing here is we are weighing the participants before the beginning of a, a, a diet program, and they are allocated to diets one, two, and three, as we have seen. We weigh them all at week one, after the diet program, we weigh them all again at week eight, and we want to now determine uh, if there's a difference between the weight loss over the eight weeks for the three different diets. So, so the first thing I'm going to need to do is calculate the weight loss. I'm going to subtract uh, week eight from week one. So weight loss, uh, using the assignment operator, is equal to um, diet data, that's the name of my vector, diet data, dollar sign, uh, week one, minus diet data, dollar sign again, week, week eight. That'll give us the calculation, in, these weights are in kilograms, so it'll give us the weight loss in kilograms uh, over the eight week period. So let me run that, calculate the weight loss, and I'm going to print out the weight loss data so, so we can take a quick look at it. And dollar sign, oh, don't, don't need a dollar sign here, just print the weight loss. And we can see we're getting a variety of uh, weight losses throughout. We can also see some minus signs indicating that there have been some weight gains in this program. So now we've got weight losses for the weight loss for diet number one, the weight loss for diet number two, and the weight loss for diet number three. And uh, let's take a look at these visually. It's always a useful thing to do. So I'm going to do a box plot to take a look at these. This will help us with our assumption of normality in this case here. So a box, box plot of weight loss. And I'm going to use the tilde symbol, which on the Windows keyboard is over the hash key. And uh, I need to, um, and what are the categories here? Well, the categories are three uh, diet, diet data numbers, one, two, and three. So that's diet data, uh, dollar sign, picking up the diet variable here. And so that's indicating uh, the weight loss. And I also need to, in this case here, uh, tell or uh, what the name of the data vector is. So that's diet data. So that this should give us a box plot. Let me run this. Yes, and we've got a nice neat box plot over here on the right hand side. Let me just expand to get a better view. And we can see our three diets across the uh, x axis here, diets one, two, and three, and our weight loss on the left hand side. And we can see that there is no outliers. The uh, box plots are typically um, um, indicating that there's um, all three sets of diet data are normally distributed. So that's good news for conducting an ANOVA test. And we can see that diets one and two are reasonably similar. Diet number two has slightly more variance, but their median values, the thick black lines, uh, are almost the same here. While, while diet number three uh, indicates that there has been a greater weight loss. So this is weight loss on the left hand side, on the y axis here. So diet number three appears to be differ, different than diets numbers one and two, while diets one and two appear to be similar. So early indications are from the visualization is that, that we will find a difference be between diet three and the other two diets. 
So that's our visual. Now let's move on to the actual calculations. Now we have we did see. Let me scroll back up here. That our diet variable here, uh, these values in the diet column, uh, values one, two, and three are integers. And because we want to use these uh, to categorize, the, we want to turn these from integer values into categorical data. So I need to convert them to a factor. So I'm going to convert the diet data diet value. I'm going to want to convert this using the uh, as dot factor. So I need to do this to convert it to uh, from an integer to a a factor. So I'm going to convert it to a factor, and the variable I'm going to um, co coerce is the diet data um, diet value. So I'm just reassigning uh, this as a factor. So let me run that, and now our diet data is a, a, a data variable is a factor. So we can now cat use this to categorize our results into the three different diets. Now there's two um, functions, but both provide the same results, but in slightly different display. There's two functions that we can use to perform an ANOVA. So I'm going to use the simplest one first, ANOVA function. And if you want to find out more information about the ANOVA function, go to the help screen, type in ANOVA in the search bar, and you get some information about the uh, ANOVA function, uh, what arguments are used, and some information and reference about it, and so on. So if you haven't used the ANOVA function before, um, it's a good idea to look this up on the help section. I just need my plots back in here so we can keep an eye on them. So the ANOVA function uses the linear model, so that's the LM function. And the linear model in this case here is going to be weight loss. Weight loss. Then use the tilde symbol again. And uh, what I want to do regress on this is my diet data. And the, the diet. Just watch out for typos. Diet data dollar sign diet. And I also, when I'm using the linear model, I need to indicate, well, what's the name of the data vector that this is drawn from? So that is just simply diet data. Right, so I'm ready to run that. And we run this, we get a typical ANOVA table displayed in the console. So we've got our degrees of freedom, we've got our sum of squares, our mean sum of squares, and our F statistic, which is the first important value that we need. So that's quite a high value there. Um, and we also get a p-value. So this is the key piece of information on an ANOVA table. This tells us whether we have found a significant difference or not. So remember earlier on I indicated an alpha value of 0 0.05. So if this p-value is less than that, it indicates that we have found a difference between at least two of the means in our data sample. So our p-value of 0 0.002 is less than our p p-value of 0 0.005. Therefore, we can reject the null hypothesis that all the population means, three in this case, are equal, in favor of the alternative hypothesis that at least two of the population means are not equal. So that's what we have found in this case, and that's as we suspected using the box plot here on the right-hand side. Uh, we have found a difference, and we can conclude that uh, um, diet number three is different from the other two. We're not sure about that. We're going to need to perform um, a post hoc Tukey test to determine that, which will be the subject of a separate video. So that's the ANOVA function there. There's a second function which produces the same results, so it depends on which one you like, which one is easier. This one is called the AOV function. So I'm going to um, need to read this. It operates a little bit differently. I'm going to need to read this into uh, a table, and um, a vector, I'm going to, which I'm calling table. And the AOV function, which again, if you go to the help screen and type in AOV, you'll find plenty of information about how this analysis of variance model is used, usage, arguments, and so on. And again, if you've not used this function before, uh, it's a good advice to go to the help screen to find out more about it. So this is uh, similarly uh, written out as we've done for the previous function on line 20, the ANOVA function, but just be careful as there are some slight differences. So weight loss, again, we use the tilde symbol, and we're, we are separating these out using the diet data. Donor sign, diet, categorical variable, don't forget. And here we need to, uh, it's slightly different, whereas before we just indicated uh, in the ANOVA function just the word, the vector name diet data itself. When we use the AOV function, we need to use the data parameter uh, equals to diet data. That's the name of the um, vector that we are using. Um, so um, very similar, but do look out that the uh, way the, the items are used is a little bit different here. So when I run that, 
Okay, we still don't see the results, uh, so we need to use a summary function to summarize our table. So when I run that, we can see we get um, almost an identical um, table that we saw before. The only difference is the number of decimal places displayed. So again, we've got an F statistic of 6.551. Again, we've got a p-value of 0 0.002. Again, we've got two asterisks to indicate that this is significant at the 0 0.01 level. That's a handy little extra that is provided uh, in R. So to fin finalize then, we need to report on this action. So my report is that my F statistic, and in brackets, we can see in our ANOVA table uh, the degrees of freedom of 2 and 75. So the 2 indicates that there's uh, three groups. We're using the N minus 1 rule here. And 75 indicates that there were 70, uh, 70, uh, 78 um, in total being used. So 75 degrees of freedom. And that's equal to, we can pull our value from the ANOVA table, so 6.551. And our p-value then, p, in our case, we know what the p-value is. It's equal to 0 0.002. So that then, we can conclude then, uh, using this, we can conclude that we have found a difference at a significance level of uh, 0 .00, 0 0.05, that we at least two of our population means uh, for diets are not the same. So we have found a significant difference using these data. So that's how you perform an ANOVA test in R. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.